Welcome to Co-App for Kids Goes Live. My name is Kelly Goodell and I'm the Prevention Coordinator for Co-Ed's Early Care and Education Division. Um, we're pleased to be partnering with the Ohio Children's Trust Fund and the Eastern Ohio Prevention Council to bring these segments to all of you, especially our viewers from Eastern Ohio region in Carroll, Coshocton, Harrison, Jefferson, Tuscarawas, Belmont, Guernsey, Monroe, Muskegon, and Noble Counties. Welcome to everyone. Today, my guest is Jennifer Lohman. She's our Family Services Coordinator here at Coed. Can you tell us a little bit about yourself and your role here at Coed? Uh, yes, um, my name is Jennifer Lohman. I am the Regional Coordinator for Family and Community Services. Um, my office is located in Marietta and we serve a 10 county region. Um, Coed has been providing resource and referral services in the 31 county region for 24 years. Um, we have three offices, one in New Philadelphia, one in Marietta, and one in Portsmouth. Um, and we provide resource and referral services to families and providers looking for child care and those um, needing child care information. Excellent. And welcome again. Thank you. In our previous segment, Jen, you and I had talked about um, the Strengthening Families Framework and a little bit about what that is. And we had our, and today we're going to be talking about the five protective factors that build upon that, that Strengthening Families Framework. So just to recap, um, for anybody who hasn't viewed that uh, segment, it's available on Co-Ed for Kids under our video section. But to recap a little bit about Strengthening Families, is basically the premise that all families have strengths, they all need support. Um, we can provide settings to help them um, and, and support them, and we want wellness and children uh, and children to have positive interactions in their lives and with a with a lead uh, goal of creating atmospheres and environments where abuse and neglect are decreased so we want stronger families we want to build upon and we're going to get into this more as we go on social and emotional competence of children knowledge of parenting and child development social connectedness concrete support in time of needs and parent resilience so today jen and i will be talking about those five factors a little bit more in depth and and really talking about how these components have come together to build strong families so jen i'll let you go ahead and get started okay um the first protective factor um, to strengthen the families and protect children that we'll talk about is the social emotional competence of children um, Children attend high quality early care and education to get support for healthy social emotional development in many ways. So it's important that children um, acquire this um, through their caring relationships with their caregivers, whether that be with their parents, um, through maybe home visiting programs or with their child care providers. Um, it's important for the children to know that it's okay to have these feelings mm -hmm. um, and to how to deal with those feelings um, as they experience those. Learning to identify emotions is, is such an important part of, of child development. And learning how to do that appropriately and positively is, is a challenge and, and it's just so very, very important. <clears throat> um, so when we talk about emotional competence but and social, what, what would be a little bit more about the social competence of child and what that really means? Um, great question. I was thinking, is it along the line of, of how they interact with their peers? Is it, is it, in this concept, is it how they interact with their family? Is it how they interact with peers? Is it how they interact it, with other adults? Is this all encompassing it's, or? It is all encompassing. So we want them to understand, you know, to have empathy with their peers, um, that when you hit another child, that does hurt. Mm -hmm. um, and when a child hits them, it does hurt, and to understand those. But the children are gonna learn these skills, um, whether it be in any of those settings that we've mentioned, um, and they're going to be able to take that home. Mm -hmm. um, they're going to be able to show those um, skills that they've learned with their families, mm -hmm. um, with their siblings, with their parents, um, grandparents, cousins, as you know, the, the family expands out. Um, so it is all encompassing mm -hmm. of with their peers, their families, their caregivers. Could, could part of our, our interactions with parents be, be teaching them how to role model appropriate? Uh, social and emotional behaviors is that something that, that could be incorporated yes and i think that kind of um, rolls next into the um, next protective factor and knowledge of child development and um, parenting mm -hmm. and so it helping increase the parents knowledge um, of what is developmentally appropriate um, that a child's not going to be able to sit in front of a tv for x amount of time in one way that um, is not the only way that you can parent. 
Um, okay. It's not the only correct way. Um, it's also important for the children. Um, not all children are alike. What works with Absolutely. one child mm -hmm. may not work with the next child um, for caregivers and for the families and the parents. Um, so what may work with the older sibling may not work with the younger sibling as far as approaches to um, different reactions. Um, I've often heard um, parents refer to their children as differently, like maybe one child they, they refer to maybe as being a more needy child um, as far as needing mm -hmm. that interaction in that one-on-one. -on -one. Mm -hmm. And I've seen that in my own family as well. You know, my, my sons are very different, and and so parenting them has been very different. Different, different techniques that need to be used. So, so having that understanding, um, not only the knowledge of what they can and should be doing at each age, but also them being responsive to the type of child that they are, or how they're going to best um, react to, whether it be parenting, discipline, um, anything really. Even how they're introduced into school, it was completely different. Yeah. So, and as you mentioned, um, from the social emotional competence and how to acknowledge and feel, you know, to acknowledge those feelings and how to deal with those, um, programs can offer um, like family engagement activities. You mm -hmm. know, an evening. Um, sometimes we don't want to refer to them as trainings because, again, like we've mentioned, um, parenting a child is different than parenting the next child. It's not always one way is the correct way. Um, there are different ways to provide those services and stuff, but um, just to let them know and sometimes get those connections mm -hmm. and stuff going. Mm -hmm. um, so the next um, protective factor for us that we can speak about is uh, concrete support in times of need. Um, and that's really getting to know the community resources that's available in the community. Um, it could be many different types of resources. Um, an example could be that dad lost his job, dad may have worked in a factory, um, and that those are the skills that he has built and known, um, and it, due to the you know, economy at the point in time, maybe hard to find a job similar to that. So maybe helping that dad connect with some maybe local job um, training, some skills trainings and stuff that, to learn another uh, field um, and stuff. Um, it could also be that for that family at that time, it would be, um, connecting him with ways to help pay his bills mm -hmm. um, or support for food um, or clothing for him and the children. Mm -hmm. um, and um, it could be many other things um, unrelated to that scenario. Um, it could be if there's a recognition from a provider or caregiver that there is a parent maybe struggling with some substance abuse mm -hmm. um, and what services and stuff are available in the um, community with substance abuse. Um, and it could be healthcare options mm -hmm. um, and stuff of what options are available in the area. Okay. So, um, and then just to roll on through to the next protective factor, um, it's social connections. Um, helping parents um, connect with other parents. Um, more parents are raising children on their own. Um, that could be for many different reasons. Um, we have several families um, in the area that have family members that are deployed. Mm -hmm. um, so they may be um, experiencing that single parent household at the moment. Um, the divorce rates, um, so it could be a divorced family situation. Um, and as we've mentioned, um, with the economy and the situations and stuff in the area, that it could be that you're moving away from your extended family in order mm -hmm. to have employment. Mm -hmm. And so you no longer have the support of your, um, maybe your mom or your dad, or um, maybe it was the spouse you've separated from that, you know, is um, now an hour to two hours away. So finding that, so, that yeah. social connectedness, that, that feeling a part of something bigger than just yourself yes. is, is a very important concept, I think, for, all, for humanity. So, yes, making, but then when you're also raising children and, and being a parent, it becomes even more important. Yeah, making connections with other families that can help you out in the times um, that you may need those and stuff. So um, they need to feel connected to other parents and being able to help each other out in a situation. Mm -hmm. I mean, it could be that I, you know, we travel for our job. Um, I myself have young children that um, are in before and after school care. 
And if I'm out of town, I may need someone, and my, my husband works and he may have to work over, that we have someone else that we could call to just simply go pick up our child mm -hmm. um, at the end of the day. And that's and valuable so. support. And a lot of yes. families need that or don't have access to that. So, you know, working through this framework can also provide some of those opportunities to learn about those um, abilities or uh, availabilities within their communities. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. um, the fifth protective factor um, is parent resilience. Um, and parent resilience is it's the ability for the family to bounce back um, from the difficult time that they've been experiencing. Um, there are two parts of resilience. The first is to be able to recognize and acknowledge that they're going through the difficult time and that the feelings that go along with the challenges in the event that, there are, that their um, situation has brought to them. Um, the second part of resilience is the ability to have hope, um, to problem solve, um, and to take action in the midst of the difficult event and feelings. And bouncing back, I mean, that's so, that, that's it's challenging. A, it's very important to bounce back. And but it's, it's, you are probably more likely to bounce back from situations that we've been talking, if you have the social connections, if you have the concrete support, if you know that if it's a child rearing issue that you're really struggling with, knowing that the next stage of development may become easier. Mm -hmm. So having all of those different types of things, I can see how they're all fitting they, together now. They connect together. Um, it, and it's also important to remember that every time a family um, is able to overcome a challenge, um, they're becoming, they're increasing their resiliency. They're more likely to overcome the next challenge and to overcome the next challenge after that. Mm -hmm. It's just like um, building your self-confidence that I can do this, I've got this. Um, we've got this. And Kelly, you're right. Um, these protective factors, they link together um, hand in hand. Mm -hmm. um, when we were talking about making those social connections and stuff, um, it could be that they need to, uh, com you know, they, they, they may need connected to um, community resources as well. Um, it could be that it was a child rearing issue that, you know, maybe they don't need per se a family engagement exercise or activity that, mm -hmm. you know, a professional type training, um, but that it is done between peer to peer. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, absolutely. And then they can get that feedback from each other and, and just continue to support each other. It could be a, just a check in phone call of support or, hey, now you're having an earth week last week. So, you know, looking at the, how that, um, that social connectedness and, and how that all pulls together is, is, again, I can see how we're all pulling this all together to build stronger families. Um, when we're looking at how to recognize these as they exist in the community, what are some of the examples that we'll be doing um, and we'll be creating learning networks and really focusing on strengthening family. So if we're pulling this all together and saying, okay, how can this look in your community? How would, from our conversations about strengthening families and about these protective factors, let's talk a little bit about how that can look in your community and how we can help. Um, in the past, um, what we've done, um, you've mentioned learning networks, is we've been able to pull together caregivers um, in a community together um, and you kind of assess where you're at with the information and stuff that we've talked about with the protective factors, what strengths you feel that you have, um, and where you need to boost those. Mm -hmm. um, and it, it could be that, you know, becoming more aware of different um, community resources and stuff that are out there. Um, it could be knowing, oh, we have a lot of families that are experiencing this in our um, mm -hmm. program, so maybe we should provide an evening um, peer group activity mm -hmm. around this topic, which could be a parenting topic. Um, again, it might just be making yourself more aware and be conscientious of um, developing that social emotional competence um, for the children and making those connections to the parents and stuff and maybe explaining to the parents how you're doing that in your program. Mm -hmm. um, especially sometimes as parents will pick up on it and they'll bring it back to like, my child did this last night and mm -hmm. you're able to make that connection back to them. That, oh yeah, we've been practicing or working on. And this also comes into that role modeling. So if parents are engaging and if you're doing that and working with them and then they're role modeling it, probably the same positive behaviors we're seeing there and it's a consistency approach in the approach of, of this is how we're you know, working with this child or, or working in this, this concept of emotions and, social, uh, and socialness, um, having the continuity between perhaps the child care 
facility and home can be really helpful as well. Absolutely. Um, so again, I mean, like we've mentioned, you know, a lot of these connect together. So sometimes um, programs, they, they may be hitting two or three of them very strongly, mm -hmm. um, and it might be just helping them boost some of their information um, for like the, the fourth or the fifth protective factor and mm -hmm. help um, build those skills in mm -hmm. um, that program. Again, we've, we've talked about child care programs, but we've also talked about, we've, we've done this work with um, other entities um, such as uh, home visiting projects. Okay. Um, uh, we've we've done it with um, some backpack food programs and stuff and how they engage Excellent. with families mm -hmm. and the children themselves. Truly um, anyone who's working with families and children absolutely. Uh, could incorporate this into their daily um, just their daily life and their daily way of, of, of doing their business or or interactions with others. So when we talk about these um, and you know with our ultimate goal of building stronger families and using these five components some I think perhaps in your experience some have shown that they're really strong in this area they're yes. providing a wonderful social emotional uh, guidance for children but perhaps they haven't provided the social connectedness and so they could incorporate that so you can look at these and say hey this is where we're at this is what we need to improve upon mm -hmm. um, and that's really what the learning networks that would be the focus of the learning network that would be yes um, through the learning networks and step programs are able to do a self-assessment mm -hmm. um, you develop a team and stuff you do that self-assessment and um, part of that team is usually um, a, a family or a couple of families that you're serving mm -hmm. so you not only look at it from your perspective but you're looking at it from others perspectives also um, that way you know what you think you're strong in and that you would want to also get that feedback from the families because they may see things just a little different um, than you may think. Like you may think, oh, I've got this on target and stuff, but they may not understand where you're coming from sometimes. So I'm um, just building those strengths and stuff. So, um, so I, I think um, we're just gonna to, you know, recap what the five protective factors are and just so we we leave you with these in your head so you're thinking about how you can use these in your daily lives and how our daily interactions with families and children and they are social and emotional competence of children knowledge of parenting and child development social connections concrete support in times of need and parent resilience and how all five of those coming together to build stronger families in our communities and what a fabulous, fabulous framework that we have to work with. Absolutely. Thank you again very much for your time today, Jen, and, and your expertise of this and our good conversation about strengthening families and, and the protective factors. And thank all of you for joining us. And we will be back with new segments coming back in, in January, and we hope to see you there. Thank you all. Bye-bye.